music. As you can see, I have a piano back here. I like art, got some artwork back here. I'm a, I'm a kind of an artistic kind of person and we like to develop and talk about that on my stream. Cool. I, I like to think I'm a pretty artistic person too. I like music. Nice. I, I'm into, I'm into vinyl. I collect a lot of vinyl. So I think that's pretty cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Nice. <laughs> So when you said you like study aesthetic philosophy, you've already have you already studied some things? Yeah, for philosophy, I have a I have my my bachelor's degree in it, um, mm -hmm. and so it's just uh, I'm planning to go to grad school to get my master's degree next, and then eventually my PhD. What is the like? What where where do you learn any sort of aesthetic things in terms of philosophy? All I know is maybe the critique of judgment from mm. Kant. Yeah, that's and that's like, one of the big ones for sure. Yeah, what else is there? Um, there's uh, it's so aesthetics is a pretty um, is is a field in philosophy that is like probably one of the least represented, I'd say, like in in literature. Like mm -hmm. it gets talked about uh, not as much, but there are some pretty uh, big aesthetic philosophies um, that people talk about. I'm I um. I, uh, a lot of my aesthetic philosophy was that like things that I've read have been things that I've read like on my own. Cause it wasn't assigned, um, mm -hmm. be fr from like people that I was interested in, like, um, like Hume, uh, David Hume, for example, has some mm -hmm. stuff on his aesthetic philosophy that I like. And, uh, um, for example, and there are people, there are aesthetic philosophers right now, um, that are, uh, talking about stuff that i think is pretty interesting too so but it, it's definitely not talked about too much um in literature that has been uh gone over in my classes it definitely is like there's a strong focus on ethics for sure in uh yeah. in school mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very cool all right well well let's get started then yeah so oh by the way what should i call you my name is fakery you can call me Faye. You can call me Zachary. My name is Zachary. Um, I see your name is Salt Shaker. Yeah, you you can call me that. That's fine if you want. Or Jacob, either way. Jacob. Okay, I like <laughs> Jacob better. All okay, right. cool. <laughs> so I guess uh, with the the question, I kind of jumped in a bit early into. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible to say that art can be better or worse um, than other art? Hmm. Um, yes. Hmm. Okay, sorry, excuse me for being a little, let me think about this. So I don't think that art can be better or worse um, in one level of understanding, but certainly some art lends itself towards being interpreted as better. So we'll go with yes. So, so um it sounds like your view might be similar to mine here but um it's a little bit hard to say so would you say that mm -hmm. is is what you're kind of saying that there's no ob there's no like objectivity to art is that what would you say that that's accurate like to, mm -hmm. to quality i wouldn't say that no i wouldn't say that you would say it's possible to have objective quality in art you'd say i don't think that it would be appropriate to evaluate art as subjective or objective. So you have to forgive me since I'm not very well uh, steeped into the normal philosophical traditions, Western philosophical tr traditions. So um, I might say some weird things like that occasionally. So, um, so I guess, would you say that, um, so you think that there's no such thing as like good or bad in art then you say? Um, I would say that I would say that. Yes. Um, well, I guess, uh, my question there is if, if you think that, um, that art is, is not able to be kind of talked about that evaluated in that way, and you can't, uh, art, certain art is not really able to be elevated above other art, then how do you think that, um, in universities that classes like music classes and art classes and literature and poetry classes and, uh, all of these classes, how do you, what do you think about these classes? Because that seems kind of how they derive their authority to me is off of that. And so would you say that these classes are not really justified in existing because 
in in reality there's no there's no way to evaluate these things so so why do we have this institutional authority granted to these positions what's what's the purpose of this if there's no reality to it so i wouldn't i wouldn't say any of that at all i think that there are ways to evaluate art they just wouldn't be in terms of good and bad uh, i do think that it is very important to refine your taste which i think you do pretty well by going to art school and learning some theory learning how to paint or whatever learning music theory and stuff like that i think this is extremely important and i am a very strong proponent of learning art learning the theory behind art and all that stuff uh, it makes it much easier to understand and it makes it um, gets rid of lots of blockages from being able to actually engage with the art closely what's what's the point of going to college in pain though like what why um oh, well. if art is if art is able to be <laughs> like if there's if no art could be evaluated as more important or more more worthy of being consumed than other arts or or anything like that then why why would we put our faith in these institutions to tell us what art we should like it should be consumed in order to learn well like it seems like if that's the case then we shouldn't have like a a kind of preference for for which art is uh more or less able to be um like have things gleaned from them i guess yes yeah, so i would say that there is no pre we shouldn't have a preference for which art is getting more things from it and uh, i've said i I messaged you earlier before when we talked a little bit about this. I think it's a failure of the audience to not get anything from certain art. So if a, if a piece of art doesn't really um, have a response, get a response from an audience, the, the audience is the one at failure, uh, at fault, not the art. Yes. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't refine your taste, right? You, you still want to develop your taste. You still want to become a better audience member by learning how to appreciate art more deeply. Whether or not you need school to do that, well, that's a whole other matter. Like if you can afford to go to school and have fun and go to school, it may be helpful for a lot of people to have this sort of hierarchical structure or to have a authority figure tell you what makes art better. For some people, it may be easier to just read a book and learn about it. There's lots of resources online teaching you how to appreciate art for free on the internet. Um, or you can just engage with art without needing to learn anything about it. But these are different methods for different people. Not everybody will respond to the same um, teaching or guidance. It's, it seems like you're saying that it would be, it's the case that there's, there's as much to be gleaned from uh, any work of, of art as another work of art. It seems like it, from your view, they all are like, have as much to gain from them. So you would think that Clifford the big, big Red Dog has as much you can learn in it as Moby Dick, you would say. Yes. yes. I, yes, yes, yes. I, I don't understand how you could defend that. It, it seems well, some, crazy to me. Yeah, some things are more obvious, right? So I don't dispute that it may be more obviously easy to get something from Moby Dick than it is to get from Clifford. But... Um, that's just that's just an ease of access of understanding the art or really engaging with the art in a full way. People who have developed their artistic skills or maybe their audience vision, I don't know how you want to describe this, people who have developed their sort of aesthetic intuition can gleam the same value from anything, any work of art, really anything, uh, as they do from the greatest works of art that we consider the greatest works of art. <clears throat> Okay, so I think I think we might have to talk about <laughs> nihilism to resolve this. I think because I remember mm. you mentioned nihilism, so we're jumping straight into it. Okay, I we're think I think well, I think I think we might have to in order to resolve it because in in order to <laughs> to to kind of move forward and talk about art, we kind of have to be. I I think we kind of have to establish that we're able to kind of ground it in something. I think so. Um, mm -hmm. so I think so. We, would you say you you can do you consider yourself a nihilist? Uh, yeah, I would personally identify as an analyst, I think. Yeah, generally. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would say that I disagree with you that you're a nihilist. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're not a nihilist. I think you're an absurdist. Okay. If I think every uh, anybody who okay. thinks that they're a nihilist but hasn't killed themselves is an absurdist, is what I think. Can can I kill myself slowly? Um. Can uh, I mean. 
everybody is killing themselves slowly always. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, what but, do I need to do to prove to you that I'm a nihilist? You, I think that in order for somebody to, to be a nihilist, they would have to, like, I think that being, I think that a, a nihilist is somebody who has killed themselves because I think that the thing that oh, keeps you from killing yourself is the, like the, the meaning of your life, basically. Interesting. Okay. Um, and I think that if you, if you accept that there is meaningless, like that, that, that everything is meaningless, then I think that you like the the result of that would be like suicide. I think that you can't. I think that like ex embracing nihilism is kind of like <laughs> is kind of. I, I I'm not saying kill yourself. Obviously, no, <laughs> no. I don't. I'm saying don't. I don't want you to be a nihilist. So, are you familiar with Nietzsche, for for instance? I am, but I want to pause for one second. It seems that your position, um, you think that a nihilist would say. Nothing matters, therefore, I must kill myself. Uh, kind of. I think that it's kind of. I think. I think. I think internalizing that belief would. That's what it results in. I think if you truly believe that your life is meaningless, you wouldn't kill yourself. Interesting. So I don't think that you really believe that your life is meaningless. I think you have meaning in your life. So I don't think you're a nihilist. Okay. So are you, are you, how familiar, do you know much about Nietzsche and his specific thought? Uh, not very, not very much. No. So Nietzsche, who's kind of, you know, he's kind of the nihilist guy that everyone talks about. Um, yeah. Isn't he anti-nihilist? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he's kind of the, the one where it comes from. And so yeah, um, his idea of, of like when he's talking about nihilism, like for the first time, like he's the first person like talking about this idea um the way that he conceives of nihilism as is like a force that is going to be kind of encroaching on society that has to be combated essentially so so he he sees that as our institutions like religion kind of lose their power uh, in society as people kind of lose the things that gave them meaning in their life because keep in mind he's writing after darwin uh published origin of species so um sure. so this is kind of Nietzsche's kind of writing uh, under the like he kind of takes it as accepted that the religion is like not real and that um, it is going to like people are going to as time goes on accept religion less and less and I mean we can see that as, as being true I think uh, based on how the rate of atheism is rising so much um, so so basically what he says is like this this kind of loss of meaninglessness is going to be like an epidemic in our culture where people are becoming less and less like have less and less meaning and, and it's going to be in an, an encroaching nihilism where people are losing out on their meaning and in order to combat this we need to create our own meanings and our own uh reasons to live to replace the these kind of structures um essentially do you follow what I, uh, what i went through there yeah Definitely. Yeah. Do, is that do you? So you would disagree with that? You would say that um, they're just there. There's no point in that because it is meaningless. Is that what you'd say, or what would you say about that? Um, I would say it's not necessary. So that's it. <laughs> so so why why do you why are you like alive a, then? Um, why am I alive? Well, I don't understand the question. Like my mommy and my daddy. Why had a little what for a way a couple years ago well, you, did their thing. Well, you have to make a yeah. you you make a continual choice to keep living, right? You have to living is a, is a continual series of choices. So like you're not choosing Interesting perspective. you're not making no choice by living. It's like every time you choose to to eat, you're choosing to continue living. Like you're you're constantly continuing to choose to go on living. So so there has to be a reason that you continually choose to live, right? You could choose just not to, but you have some reason that you do, right? Um, I understand your perspective, um, but I don't agree fully with what you're saying. So you think that human, do you think that human beings are just don't act based on reason at all? Do you think that they're, that they some are? Some people do. I think that if you analyze anything, you can find reason. If you look through the world in terms of reason, you will see reasons for everything. Um, but that's not a necessary way to look at the world. 
No, no, that's not what I mean. I mean, do you think that okay. people act with reason? As in, do you think that when people act, they have they act in ways that are are rational, not 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 rational as in like smart or intelligent, but rational as in motivated by reason, like their reasons that they have. Do you think that people act with with reason? Some people do. You think so, uh, and some people do sometimes. You think that there are people that that act without any reason i think that if you analyze any particular action you will always find a reason if you analyze anything you'll have a reason if you analyze in terms exactly. of reason if you look if you look for reason you'll always find reason yeah because there is a <laughs> reason a, yeah. oh yeah um you can i understand why a person would say that yeah ha you have to say that it follows from that how could you not say that um in the same way like a person could look at anything in wonder if it's a political thing and you'll always get the answer yes if you look in the through a political lens everything is politics and if you look through the sort of artistic lens everything is art yes mm, so i think yes, you can always find no reason, I, well, but, it's not necessary. but there's there's no reason to talk to talk about those things in those way though like there's no reason to mm -hmm. say that everything is art that, like there, then there's no if everything there's is no art, reason to say everything is reasonable is there no i'm not saying everything is reasonable i'm saying that humans act with reason i'm not saying everything in the world is reasonable i'm saying when a, when a human does something there is a reason that they do it because that's how our mind works like this is just like basic psychology that this is just the way our mind works like we act with intention and reason um i don't agree with this you you disagree you disagree with virtually every philosopher and psychologist in existence like throughout history then probably how do you how do you reconcile that there are different branches of philosophy and psychology that are not necessarily bound to western psychology mm, so you just say that i guess so you think that it's so are are you do you believe in naturalism i guess or or do you believe in in any any kind of mysticism can you uh, define what those are without using the label uh naturalism Again, I'm not a very philosoph philosophically trained person naturalism is kind of that everything can be uh everything in the world is kind of uh explainable in the world i guess we can always look find a natural explanation for things um whereas this, yeah. mysticism is like there are some things that cannot be explained uh through like the natural world like there are forces beyond our understanding sort of um i believe if you analyze the world in terms of natural explanations you will always get an answer but i don't think that's the most uh necessary it's not necessary and it's not always the most appropriate way to view the world so what I'm saying is I believe both, <laughs> which is probably a strange answer, I'm sure, to you. I think I think it doesn't make sense. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah. How how do you arrive at this at these positions? Um, pay close. Well, I personally pay closer attention to my own behavior and my own world, I guess, and that's how I come to these decisions, I suppose. So you just, how, so what, what, how do you come to believe that there is, so, okay, what is, what do you think that exists that is mystical in the world? What, what, is, what do you think is mystical? Like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I said specifically that there's something mystical in the world. Um, if you look at anything with an eye of reason, you will always find reasons for it. So if I present you something mystical and you're looking with an eye of reason, you're going to find a reason for it. Like you're going to find something in the natural world to explain it. And I don't think this is a failure of anything. It's fine to look at anything in terms of natural explanations and you'll always get an answer in terms of natural explanations and the reasonable world. But you don't have to do that. What I'm saying is you don't have to do that. Why shouldn't we do that? I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm saying you don't have to. Well, I'm saying we should, so. That's fine. Why would you, what, what would you say against that? I, you can if you like. I don't mind. Well, <laughs> it's why? just not necessary. <laughs> why? How is it not necessary, though? Well, uh, how is it not necessary? 
Hmm. I think I think you have I think that you're kind of missing it like a, an understand like the fundamental understanding of how like psychologists and neurologists and and many scientists understand how our brains and our minds work. I think you're kind of um, I think you're I, kind of uh, not not quite um, internalizing hmm. how they how they conceive of these things, because the way that our mind works is like it is based off of cause and effect and making connections and which is reasoning essentially like our mind our axiomatic like presupp presuppositional uh way that our mind operates is through reasoning like you can't help but to reason you like try to think without reason right now you can't do it um that's it's interesting that you think that i can't do that but um uh, okay i understand your perspective yeah, and I think as I said, if you look through reason, you will always find reason. So I don't think there's anything wrong with neuroscientists looking at the brain and looking at the mind as some sort of causal system, right? You can do that, and you can get a very uh, complicated structure of understanding and very detailed understanding, very precise understanding of the world with this sort of cause and effect of only looking at the natural world. I just don't think it's necessary. I would say that somebody who doesn't go about their life that way would be incompatible with society. I agree with that. <laughs> I fully, so, so you fully do. Agree with so that. you do go about your life that way, then, right? That's an interesting perspective. I'm a, no, I'm asking you if you do. Um, I don't think so. How how are you existing in society then? Um. The afterglow of my past successes, I guess, in the world. <laughs> but I don't know if like getting into personal um, history or personal um, personal issues or personal like predilections yeah, is necessary not, for Yeah, me. it's probably yeah, not relevant. But, but, <laughs> but um, so I guess I guess maybe <laughs> maybe a, maybe a better way to go about this than to try to understand where you're coming from would be to uh -huh. just kind of lay out where I'm coming from, and then you okay. can you can tell me if you think there are problems with it. That might okay. be a better way to go about this. So, Let's do it. so I I hold fundamentally I I I'm not a nihilist, but I fundamentally do believe that there's no inherent objective meaning in the universe. Okay. Okay. So that's my that's one that's one fundamental belief I have that the universe will never provide us any objective meaning or anything. However, I I am an absurdist, meaning mm -hmm. that um I believe that essentially I subscribe to fictionalism. Uh, are you familiar with this term? Um somewhat, but you can tell me what it means in what particular stance. Essentially, I believe that um we we um it is necessary for part of the human experience to create these kind of useful fictions for our life that may not be necessarily true but are nonetheless um required to or or maybe not even required but are useful or worthwhile to create uh even if we even though we understand that these are not an objective thing represented in the the true nature of the world and so for example, there's moral fictionalism, which is that we can we can talk about moral and ethical things, even though we accept that morality is not a part of the world. Um, kind of the perspective there is that morality is a thing created by humans, so humans can shape it. Essentially, is the is the the kind of fictionalist belief. It's like we we've created morality, so we can shape it in into the way that will best serve us. Uh, as as humanity and there's uh and it doesn't matter whether or not it's objectively true like it, it doesn't matter it's just this is the better way to live our life is is with this lens and i apply that i apply that belief to art as well where sure. i it's fictionalism to art where i say that there's no way of saying objectively that art is better uh there's no objective way it but like way of doing this but art is a concept created by humans so we can shape it to be the way that is best for us so that's where i bail i base my aesthetic philosophy off of okay so do you um, do you have I, any problems with any of that i wouldn't say i have any problems with it i don't quite agree with the framing of it but i think um i can agree enough we agree enough to not have any issues really i don't think Okay, so 
so I guess I guess with that established, I guess we can kind of I can go into the art stuff then more specifically. Okay. Um, yeah. So from based off of that perspective of this of fictionalism, so to kind of say that's where I'm kind of coming from of how I can assess art. Um, Cause if, if I, if I didn't hold that art could be talked about in this way, if I, if I held that it was like purely subjective, I wouldn't have any basis to really present a, an aesthetic philosophy off of. So I kind of have to establish that first. Um, if, if I want to be taken seriously in any philosophical tradition, that is um, interesting yeah that, that's just okay. if you don't have a, a basis for your aesthetic philosophy it's it's kind of hard to get it off the ground but um interesting uh but mm -hmm. um so essentially also i i don't know if you're watching uh my camera so excuse me for the facial expressions or whatever we, uh, yeah i am but it's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still streaming, so I, I have this sort of performance mindset. So mm, okay, uh, excuse me for that. Yeah, <laughs> that's all right. Um, so I guess my kind of my central claim about art is that art is about uh, individual expression uh, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Uh, that that's the most important thing about art. It's not the only thing like that is goes into making good art, but it's the most important thing going that goes into making good art um wow do you do you do you think that that's not true i it depends on what you mean by individual uh individual but i'm fairly sure i completely disagree i'm fairly sure okay um so individual expression um as in uh i i think that um the art should um present uh a a individual vision essentially here i have actually so i take a lot of my thought from art from a from an essay by oscar wilde called the soul of man under socialism uh and i'm not talking about socialism at all right now but but he talks about art in it a lot and so uh that's the part that i'm more interested in um okay <laughs> and uh so i'm gonna a little quote that i have from him that i'm, I'm gonna i'll read okay. off real quick is he says Art is individualism, and individualism is a disturbing and disintegrating force. There lies its immense value, for what it seeks to disturb is the monotony of type, slavery of custom, tyranny of habit, and the reduction of man to the level of a machine. So, essentially, kind of what he's saying is um, that art is is kind of uh good art is always kind of pushing boundaries and being individual um and that poor art is art that kind of is is um kind of going into into other established molds or kind of not doing their own individual thought and kind of like appealing to the kind of collective desires of people so so a way to th kind of think about this is that um popularity or marketability and artistic um and, and and individual artistic vision are kind of counter forces to each other where um if if something's popular or if something is is attempting to attain popularity or marketability um if someone's creating a work with that goal first and foremost in mind of like making something that will be marketable or profitable there, I would say they're not making, they're not doing art. They're doing craftsmanship. I would say of meeting a market demand, um, like how a woodworker would, would make chairs because there are people who need chairs. I would say if, if that's what you go into making art doing, uh, is meeting the demand of what people say they want, um, like that. I think you're you're not doing art. I think you're doing craftsmanship because I think it's mm -hmm. not useful to define art in a way that would encompass all things. I think there's a reason to make art to have art defined as something other than craftsmanship because I think it is better for it if we do. So, yeah, I can I think I agree partially with this. So, if you're doing art for a particular reason like a commodifying yourself or just trying to get a lot of money or uh, whatever getting fame i think that this is definitely not um art in the way that i would think is good art um but i also very very strongly think that trying to express your personality 
or trying to induce emotions is a complete failure and it's completely missing the point of art. It's missing the soul of art completely. I'm not, when I say it's individualism, I'm not saying that all art has to be like confessional necessarily. Like that's not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it has to be like, you have to go out there and confess your deepest, darkest, like every single piece of art has to be you going out there and being like, this was my childhood. This is what happened to me. Like, these are my experiences. I'm not saying anything like that, that it has to be like sure. your personal life story. I'm just saying that um, it is, that individualism is simply like one asserting themselves as an individual and uh, a kind of like thinking for themselves and acting for themselves, that kind of thing, uh, coming up with their own yeah, answers that too. Uh, mm -hmm. rather than accepting collective answers uh, as in like uh, if the if um, say I think any time where you compromise your artistic vision for the sake of commercial success or um marketability i think you you are um less of an artist than somebody who who doesn't essentially yeah and i would say if you ever um if you compromise your art for the sake of personal expression you i'd say the same thing that yours are saying <laughs> yeah so uh you don't yeah personal expression is kind of a, no a i didn't i'm not here. saying personal expression i'm saying individualism mm -hmm. specifically if not personal expression for example i would say um oscar wilde himself none of his none of his literature is is like confessional but he's the one who has this mm -hmm. idea he's like when he writes his books he's not writing about himself you know he's not talking about himself personally yet his works mm -hmm. are individualist entirely yeah. individualist they're even though they're mm -hmm. not personal they're individualist and and that's kind of about putting putting yourself into it in a sense but i'm not putting you your personality necessarily into it but putting kind of like your your individualized actual hopefully actualized self into your work essentially mm -hmm. Um, I still think I'm completely disagreeing here, but you know, I, I can follow along with the definition that you're giving. Uh, I understand, but I still don't quite think that your individual way of viewing the world or whatever your individual perspective is what needs to go into the art. That is a blockage, I would say. No, I, I, it's not. It's not that it's not that it has to be well so first of all i think that any time that you are making art you can't write about things that you don't know about like you can't write about or talk about things that you don't have anything to say about or don't know anything about that like that do you agree with that um no you can't okay i'll, I'll rephrase that you can't write about or talk about anything in a way that anybody would have any reason to read if you don't know anything about it. Um, I disagree with that too. Maybe, maybe not because you said reason. So it depends on what you mean by reason there, but um, you can say things that are just kind of nonsensical at its face and the person doesn't quite, quite understand and an audience can read it and really gleam a lot out of it and get something from it, which will be, which may or may not be related or unrelated. Well, it doesn't have to. It doesn't. To what the artist sorry. intended. So it doesn't matter if it's uh, if it appears nonsensical on its face. If it is sensical, like that doesn't really matter. Um, mm, yeah, sorry, I threw that in there. <laughs> um, I th I think um, if if there's no if there's nothing to be gleaned from a work of art, I think there's no reason for for us to call it a work of art. Essentially, interesting. Mm -hmm. That's because of the fact that this goes back to my fictionalism. I think we define mm -hmm. terms like art in ways that suit us, right? That are better for us. So if there's no, if, if, if our idea of art contains things that are of no benefit to us whatsoever, I think it's not art. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have no reason to call that art because I subscribe to this fictionalist belief of art that, mm -hmm. that yeah. these are fictions. So yeah, we definitely completely disagree here. I think if you're getting benefit from your art, you've missed it. Like now you're just doing pragmatism, I guess, or you're getting benefit and that's your activity is getting benefit. And you know, that's cool, There's nothing wrong with that, but that's not art. Um, if you're getting benefit from it, you've missed the art. 
you human do, humans act in self-interest though you can't do something in without benefit for it i believe in psychological egoism sure yeah i i think that is a very helpful way of looking at the world in some situations to analyze I'll, everybody's I, actions i disagree that it's a helpful way of looking at the world i think it's not a very helpful way i think it, it's i mean it's maybe in some situations but i think it can in lead some to situations, some, yeah. some a lot of problems but i think it's just true um that it's that I I'm not saying that people are necessarily going to act in ways that are quote unquote selfish, but that they're self motivated in, in all instances. Mm -hmm. As in, even if they do something quote unquote selfless, they do it for for their own self interest still because it makes them feel good. And to me, that doesn't lessen the act in any way. Like I don't think that makes it any less good because you feel good things with, because you feel good about it. But like that's the reason why you do it is because you feel good about it. Like we're in the end, we're even selfless things are motivated by self-interest. Like, and I don't think that makes them any, any less valuable, but I think that's just the case, right? Um, no, it's not the case, but I agree with the premise. I think, well, not the premise, but and of course you probably don't think that I agree, but you can look at the world in terms of benefit of whatever particular system that you're looking at a person, a self, whatever you want to call that. Uh, if you look at a person, let's say a body and the mind, uh, if you look at this person and analyze all of their actions in terms of benefit to them, you will always get an answer and you'll always see that they're benefiting themselves, but you don't have to view the world in that way. But you can. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, and you you'll always see that in that terms. But you don't have to. <laughs> but it seems like you're saying you have to because it is just true. I don't agree. With I that. don't. I don't think that it's helpful to think about people as acting this way. That's where fictionalism comes in because I hold that you can hold beliefs about the nature of the universe, the nature of the way things work, and then you can also hold separate beliefs about how we ought to interact with these things as humans that's how i go about these things so i have a, a my my beliefs in in the things that i believe just are true based off of scientific research based off of psychological understandings of things based off of uh metaphysical writings all, all these sort of things i have my my beliefs about the way that the world works in reality, but then there's also the way that we ought to, as humans, interact with the world, and this is separate from from that sphere, but it's influenced by sure. it. But but this is where a lot of fictionalism comes in because mm -hmm. these are not based off of um, these are not based off of like ob objectivity necessarily in the universe. These are based off of these are these are things that we construct to benefit us. Yeah, I think I mostly agree there. Um, I just don't agree with that where we started in the beginning here with ethical or sorry, egoism, uh, psychological egoism being true. I don't buy it. Um, it but, and maybe I've overspoke or overstepped by saying it's a helpful way of viewing the world, but uh, I think you can view the world in that way. It's not necessary. It's not true. I think that it's if you if you if we were to accept that people do not act based off of like connecting one thing to the next thing kind of like a chain of of things like that if we if we don't accept that this is how people's thoughts work I think we descend into absurdity where nothing makes like nothing works anymore Can we descend into nihilism? No, we can't because we'd all kill ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nihilist, therefore I must seppuku. No, you don't be idea. a nihilist. You're not a nihilist. I don't think. <laughs> I, nobody is a nihilist. I don't think. Like I don't believe that anybody who is alive is a nihilist. Interesting viewpoint there. Um, unless, um, unless they're they are maybe like restrained and like unable to kill themselves. Maybe that could be possible. Like if, but like if you're a nihilist, you would have like you would have to like. You would have no reason to continue living because that's the way that human minds operate. Like this is something that Kant kind of talks about in, in the way that our mind works where um, we have kind of there are structures of the way that our mind works that we cannot we cannot go beyond like the, we are kind of in a human frame like a machine that kind of like organizes like and structures the way that we think about things that like we cannot go like we cannot like 
over like surpass this because this is like the way that our mind works like kind of like like a like an animal can't just like start thinking about things in like a in a way that we think about things like we can't just change the way that our mind processes thoughts because there's a biological reality to how it's structured and how things are organized in our mind in terms of how the processes work. This is what all academic fields operate under this assumption, this assumption essentially that there are things about our mind that can, that are uh, traceable like this, that, that we have to kind of accept as axioms. That's kind of what this term means of, of things that are fundamentally true about being a human sort of. And one of these is the fact that our mind operates in terms of cause and effect and based off of reason. This, this is, <laughs> this is, it's just, it is just the case that like when you, when you are like doing something, you are operating off of, off of reason. Like this is just how it works. It, it like, I, you can't, there's no way you can really deny this because it's like any time that something <laughs> you do something like you are doing it with a reason, like, if you if you have no reason you won't do anything like not doing something is like is like do you, do you understand what i'm what i'm saying i certainly understand what you're saying and i disagree but i don't think um i don't think that the disagreement that i have doesn't seem to, to be uh landing with the way that you're responding here Right. I'm not denying that you can always analyze the world in terms of reason. That is not my claim, I guess. Uh, I'm just saying that it's not necessary. So when you say that this is just how humans act, I'm viewing, like you're saying yourself, that you view the world in terms of reason and you always see reason. And I say, yes, you can always do that, but you don't have to. And then you say, well, look at this thing. I'm viewing it in terms of reason and I see reasons. Yes, you do. Yeah. And look, psychology and science and cause and effect Yes, you're looking at the world in that way. You can see that, uh, but you don't have to. Can and you... Then you say, present me something where yeah, that's I, exactly. I can see it. I can see something that doesn't have reasons, mm -hmm. even though you're wearing the glasses of reasons and you're always going to see reasons. Exactly. Of that's... course, if I present anything to you, you're going to always see reason. But Exactly, because there everybody. is reason. That's how the human that is... mind works. That is... It's unfortunate that there are a lot of people who are bound to one mode of interacting in the world that's that is the way but that you interact in the world if you didn't believe in reason <laughs> and cause and effect like how do you know when you go to move your leg your leg is going to move because you believe that it like you have you understand the cause and effect of the world you understand that when you will your leg to move your leg is going to move um and you 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 use reason and intention and attention in doing this action there's there's a deliberate process behind this and it's reasoned you're not you're not acting you're not a robot you're not acting off of um like there's not like a crank on your back that like you you spin and then like you wind yourself up and then you go it's like you have a you have a mind that is directing your actions like this is how our uh, being a human works is that we have a mind that directs our actions and that mind operates off of reason like that's that's what it what it means to be a human is having a mind that directs our actions Ooh. off of reasons cause and effect wow yeah i definitely don't want to deny your experience i won't step on how you view yourself or how you view humanity but i will say it's not necessary how that's all i'll say how well, you know you can't just say that you have to say how it's not necessary because i just told you my explanation for why it is necessary so you have to tell me how um, how well, it's I'm not, not necessary I'm definitely not denying what you're saying. If you view the world in terms of reason, you will always see reasons, and you can, you can do that if you like. I'm, I'm it's telling you, to. that's that's. I'm telling you, you do have to tell me how you don't, because I, I just told you how I how my argument for <laughs> why you do. Because I say even the simplest things that seem mindless are have reason and intention behind yeah. them. So everything has intention and reason if you view the world in that way. Yes. No. I agree with that. Well, okay, but we are as humans, we are forced to view the world that way. <laughs> Um, because that's how our mind works. Maybe humans are limited to that. Maybe we, we are need to be limited to no. humanity. <laughs> so am I talking to an alien or? <laughs> um, I'm sure you can analyze um, the scenario and 
you can you can view it in many different ways. I'm I'm guessing by most accounts you'd be talking to a human, um, but you don't have to only view the world in that way. So so if you don't think that you can say anything about anything really, then why would anybody talk to you? That is not at all my claim. I don't well, know no, that, but that that's from. no, but that's what it's kind of coming down to, though. Where it's every time we try to follow something, it comes down to like, well, there's nothing we can really say about this because we don't think in reason, and so it's like anything can just kind of be waved away as like, well, hang on, you're supposed. you're using a reasonable lens, but like you don't have to use a reasonable lens because we can kind of, mm -hmm. we don't, so it's like, it comes down to anything can kind of just be written off. Like there's no reason to talk about anything when we can just say, well, it's not re there's, we don't need to have reason. So it's like, there's no reason to talk like for you to talk to anybody about anything because you don't like if, if reason doesn't matter, then there's no, then like you, why would you talk to anybody? Or why would anybody um, talk to you? Yeah, I feel like there's a maybe a bit of a conflation with many different types of uh, nihilistic stances, I suppose, that we maybe um, may have been rolled into that response that you just had there. Um, I'm not saying that reason is a bad thing. I'm not dismissing reason. I'm not saying it's the wrong way to view the world. I'm not saying there's any problem with reason. I'm just saying it's not necessary. It doesn't mean that you must deny it. it doesn't mean that you must uh, disconnect from reason. I like reasons. I like to develop my reason. It's just not necessary. How so? How do you interact in the world with the world in a way that does not involve reason? Can you can you provide me some way that you interact with the world without reason? The issue is if I provide anything, you will interpret it as reasons, which is fine. I don't well, think there's a problem there. What if because but there might be a reason? It's like just a lens, there's just a lens that you have here of viewing the world with reason. It's like if somebody says everything is political, show me something that's not political, and you show somebody cute cat videos, and they're like, "This is political because you have the freedom to view cat videos, and you have the the money to look at YouTube, and everything is political." Well, yeah, when you have the lens of politics, everything is political, but you don't have to look at the world that way. And there's nothing you can provide somebody who has this notion that everything is political like they're never going to come out of it if they're thinking that everything is political if you think that everybody is working off of egoism you can never show somebody doing anything altruistic because you're always going to point to something else oh really really it's about that feeling that good satisfying feeling that you have oh really it's about per perpetuating your species and and helping your family it's always some thing because you have that lens and you can always shoehorn everything back into whatever it is that you have that lens if you want to think of everything in terms of reason if you want to think of everything in terms of politics if you want to think of everything in terms of egoism you can look at anything in whatever way you want to but it's just your lens and it's not necessary some lenses Sorry, excuse me <laughs> it's fine excuse me again i'm being a little performative no, no you're all right <laughs> so <laughs> so do you do you believe do you believe in causality do you believe that things are caused by things <laughs> Uh, I think that causality is a very uh, helpful way of viewing the world sometimes. But you don't think it's necessarily <laughs> true? It's not necessary. No. So there are, there are uncaused things you believe? Um, believe would be a strange way of uh, asking that. Um, if you look in terms of causality, you will see causality. You don't have to. So, you you didn't really answer my question. I'm saying if you if you think you don't have to see causality, then do you believe that there exist things that are not caused? That it's like there's no other way to you can't get around this question. That you have it's it's a pretty simple question. Um, you don't have to view the world in terms of causality. Yeah, but I am. So I'm asking you, do you think that there are things that are uncaused? So you are. If you're viewing the world through causality, everything is causal. And that's the end of the story there, I guess. No, I'm I'm not saying I'm not I'm not even yet necessarily asserting that everything is causal. I'm saying okay, okay let's 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 we can agree that these lenses are a subjective thing, right? Right? So let's put this lens on for a second for for this. I wouldn't say it's subjective. 
but well whatever whatever you want to call it we can use these lenses of causality so let's use the lens of causality like we can do <laughs> as a human right this is something that humans can uniquely do is kind of look at things in different ways right um as far as at least as far as we know of things that have a mind so far we don't know of anything else that can do that yet so have a okay. have um unique ways of looking at things this is kind of a this is kind of a unique thing Sorry. for us that we I know keep forgetting that you can see me so i, have, yeah. I apologize for the, for the silliness um, um um wow yeah you can view the world in causality and you'll always see causality if you view the world that way you don't have to uh, yeah but I'm saying this is kind of a unique thing that we can do is we can kind of use these other ways of looking at things to kind of get benefit from things that will enhance our life, right? We can kind of say, well, if we look at this in this way, there might be something we can gain from looking at it in this way. And so we, even if we accept that maybe this way of looking at things is maybe not necessarily the way that the world would work without if no humans existed, for example, but like because humans exist... Like, this is the a way that it's useful to conceive of this or to talk about this because there are things that can gain and enhance our life. And so because of that, it's worthwhile to look at things in this way. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with looking in, in the world in terms of causality. Uh, if you think that this is a uniquely human trait. No, no, not That's causality. Not not that causality uh -huh. is, but with that applying different lenses, frameworks. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Could you could you, you name that only humans can do that? Could you name another species that can apply another lens of analysis species. on the world? Species. Um, yeah. What, it seems okay. that you have the lens that only humans have this capability. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be able to provide anything that would uh, because go out of well, because out of, of your lens. Right? Well, because the difference is that mine is based on science. Because True. science is useful, and there are things that science provides us that we can learn about the world, so it's I like worth science. using. Science is great. So I think it seems like you're just you are just kind of like anti-useful things. It seems like like you're just anti what? frameworks, like what? in general, is what? kind of what it sounds like you're saying. I love frameworks. What are you going on? Well, about? anytime, I'm, anytime I'm... I go to use one, you say, "Well, you can use that," but I don't. I'm not talking about that so any so anytime i try to bring one up it's like you're kind of not willing to engage with it so it's like it kind of seems no, like I'm you're just engage and we can we can go to any particular framework you like but so, so do you think looking at things in terms of causes is is, a, is a helpful do you think it's a worth like worthy framework to use it's certainly helpful sometimes i like do you think it's when is it it's not helpful can you name me a time that it's ever in the history of all humanity ever been not helpful to think about causality? Name me a time in the causal loop of the entire universe when causality wasn't important. Imagine no, I'm just question. saying, I'm just saying ever, <laughs> has there ever been an instance where looking or where not applying the lens of causality has, has provided benefits to anybody? Benefits maybe making their life better for like happier life um again the question with the question that you're asking it seems that you have a particular way of viewing the world baked into the question and you're asking me to contradict the way that you view the world with the question in within the question as you've built the way to view the world in the question hopefully i'm not getting too jumbled here um I can't present to you something that will contradict the worldview that you view the world into because you're viewing the world in that way. You're viewing the world in that way. You've made this decision to view the world causally. Or no, that, that is absolutely not way. true. I have to stop you. That is absolutely not true that I'm making this decision to view the world causally. I wholeheartedly reject that. I think that human beings necessarily view the world causally. I think that if you didn't view the world causally, you would literally be catatonic like you would not yeah, <laughs> i think that that is just catatonic. that is just the case like in order to do anything you have to view things causally we can say that maybe we can say maybe outside of humanity maybe things are not necessarily causal 
like this might be the case that they're not but as a human <laughs> things are causal to us always like we and so our mind operates under this framework of causality because mm. without causality we would not do anything there would, if there was no cause and effect <laughs> we wouldn't we would have no if we didn't think in cause and effect we wouldn't there would we would literally be catatonic because that's how our mind operates to direct us to do things because we have to have a will because that's how our mind works we have to have a will to do something because our mind, our psychology directs our body to do things. And so in order to do that, the mental kind of directing the material that has to have a will in order to do that, because that's how our mind interacts with our body. And so when you, when you will your body to do something, you have a reason for doing it. And bec like, cause you wouldn't will it without a reason to do it because that's just how your mind works. Yeah, so I just want to um, recap one of the, <laughs> I apologize for laughing, so. <laughs> if you didn't think in cause and effect, that would cause you to be catatonic. If you didn't think of in terms of meaning, you would necessarily kill yourself due to the depression mm -hmm. of not having meaning. I mean, let's just... Well, appreciate not exactly the depression. The of these things. No, no, it's not. They're not ridiculous at all. This is actually very commonly accepted. Like the fact that you think these are ridiculous, I think is pretty funny because these very are commonly. these are academically like positions that are like taken credibly in, in like many <laughs> academic circles. So I think it is kind of like strange that you think that um, like, do you do you think that like you just are more versed in these things and people who dedicate their life to studying these things like do you think that you have some kind of far-reaching wisdom that nobody else in the world could have because you're kind of very quick to dismiss things as being ridiculous like this like w despite the fact that there are like it seems like you're kind of very quick to write off things that like very smart and reasonable people believe in like i think that you might kind of want to take a step back and kind of uh Reason and kind of um, evaluate this, the fact that there are people that are smarter than both you and I who have some major disagreements on a lot of things, and it might be worth it to kind of think about what they have to say. Um, it's fascinating, again, that it seems that you think that I'm dismissing the intelligence or whatever. The well, achievements you disagree with them on, on almost everything. I don't disagree with these people on probably anything right just one thing it's not necessary right when you're saying it's true it's not one way to view the world is in terms of reason and in terms of you know causality or whatever it is and that's fine it's not necessary i i think you're just wrong this is something that kant says that every pretty much every philosopher post kant um accepts this is how he talks about axiomatically this is kind of just the way that our mind works is we we have things that are a priori true about the way that our mind works that we we know before experience the and axioms are kind of things that are not justified be, because like we don't need to justify them because they are just true as part of the human experience if if somebody is having a human experience, they are exercising these certain things, like like applying the lens <laughs> of cause and effect to the way that they make their decisions. That that is just the way that you go about these things. Like that like if you disagree with this, you disagree with the entire field of psychology. Uh, just but on its face you you think that the if you disagree with that fact right there you think that psychology is is a pointless thing because that's literally the fundamental <laughs> assumption of psychology is that people act with reasons that we can understand and and kind of make like understand and help uh craft into better ways is kind of the the fundamental assumption of the field of psychology is that we can is that people act with reason so if you disagree with this you disagree with the entire fundamentals of the field of psychology just just to put that out there you disagree with many many philosophers i'd say probably most of them you disagree with like as a fundamental belief probably. that accept this because most people after kant accept this fundamentally so you disagree with most of the field of philosophy fundamentally so just just putting that out there that 
just to just to let it be known that like you you do you just said you don't think like you don't discredit these institutions but you do discredit these institutions because your beliefs like you're saying necessarily say that these fields are operating off of faulty assumptions which i wholeheartedly disagree with okay <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right you want to call it there i guess really we didn't get into art at all oh well i mean i oh, thought man. well i well it's kind of hard to get into to it's kind of hard to get into art like if we if i can't really assert anything with any reason like if there's if you think there's no reason no, to say that use reason well, if you think that there's no reason to say that anything is any one way or another, then there's no reason to talk to you about anything because it's just at the end of the day going to come back down to the same thing. And so that you're at that point, if you really believe the things that you're saying you believe, I don't think it's really worthwhile to have a conversation with you about these things because there's no there's nothing to talk about. Um, OK, well, uh, if you don't think that there's any reason to talk to me, I guess that. Uh, one not, way to view the world not not under your your the way that you view the world i don't think there's any any conversation we could really have based off of that i think that the way that you claim to view the world kind of makes you incompatible with having any kind of serious intellectual discussion about anything wow okay i i think well, that I is just you. the case yeah, not welcome. no i, I don't yeah, if... no i don't mean to be i'm sorry i don't mean it to be rude but i just think that I, I think you're a nice you seem like a nice person you seem like like a good person but I just think that there I I don't think I could engage in a conversation when you're when with when you can't accept like fundamental things like presuppositional things like this like that humans act with with intention or with reason or view things in cause and effect like these are just fundamental things that are like built into how people talk about things and how people interact with the world and so if you don't think that these are things that are uh necessary about how the human mind works there's then we can't really talk about anything because you can wave away anything that i say by saying that not everything has has to have a reason based on how humans act or not everything has to have this so there's no there's no point to having a discussion with you at that point because there's nothing that we could even there's no way to talk to you or like reach like get to your mind or like or anything like that because you're you're you are on an island essentially away from the entire world where nobody could could reach it because you've like so fortified it away from the world that nothing else could ever come near it so there's no reason to really have a conversation wow um yeah well all i can say is that uh, i never at any point dismiss anything that you're saying or any of the fields of psychology and i would never do that to um, put my lens or my way of view in the world on a higher plane than anybody else's. But you're asking my opinion if I agree with certain things. And I honestly give you the answer here. And there are different ways of viewing the world, but that does not mean that we mustn't view the world in your particular way. However, I understand uh, the frustration this, and I understand sorry. the perspective that you have, uh, thinking that um, I could dismiss things later down the road uh, just because I have slightly stranger views that are not quite normal in Western philosophy, I guess. So I understand the frustration. I understand the uh, criticism. I think fair to call it criticism. And um, well, I had a good time personally. Hopefully, you did too. I did. I did enjoy the conversation. Um, okay. I hope. Uh, I hope you kind of um, think about kind of the things I say and uh, your kind of uh, the ability that you would have to communicate with people based on the framework that you have um, and how it kind of, it separates you from kind of the rest of humanity. If you, if you truly view things this way, I think it's um, a worthwhile thing to, to kind of consider there. Okay. All right. I appreciate the discussion. Yeah, man. Catch you another time. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> have a good one. Yeah, you too. Please take good care of yourself. It's very important. <laughs> yeah. You too. See ya. Bye-bye.
here how do I put myself full screen now um here um I want to just uh okay whatever um okay so that that conversation was um uh pretty uh pointless i would say um he was a nice guy and all but like anytime that i ever would go to try to talk about anything uh it would just come down to the same thing of well i mean you can look at it that way if you want like but and then i and then i would say well, the, I mean, I want to look at it this way because it's better to look at it this way. And then he'd say, like, well, you can look at it as, as it's better if you want. And I'm like, well, no, I think it's better because it makes us happier. And he's like, well, you can look at it that way if you want. And it's like, OK, well, if, if everything is just going to come down to you can look at it this way if you want to. Like, what's the point? There's nothing to talk about with you. You're not somebody who I can talk to, unfortunately, um, about anything because it's uh if, if it just comes down to if everything comes down to you can look at it that way um then you are just kind of isolating yourself from the way that people talk about and think about things and ways that make human life more enjoyable in terms of thinking about these things this way also the fact that he considered himself a nihilist is is i think pretty crazy 